Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Anti-Contractor Home Podcast. My name is Chance. And I'm Belinda. In this podcast, we cover different aspects of building a home, whether it's foundation, electrical work, insulation, all these different things. But we try to tackle it from an anti-contractor home perspective, something that can be done by the homeowner, that's something that's low maintenance, um, something that's fast to put up, fast to construct. In this podcast, we are giving the power back to the homeowner. And by that, we mean we want the homeowner to fully understand how their house functions and be able to maintain and repair it on their own. As we mentioned in the previous video, we're going to be covering insulation over the next couple of podcasts because it's such a broad topic and there's so many different types of insulation. So there, in this podcast, we're going to be covering blanket insulation and blown in or loose fill insulation. Um, so before we can jump into insulation itself, we have to understand what R value is. Because every time you refer to insulation, usually people talk about the R value of it. So R value is basically the inherent property of a material to stop the flow of heat from one side to another side. R value is the measure of resistance to heat flow through a given thickness of material. Correct, yeah. That's basically all that R value is. Yeah. Which is a little misleading whenever it comes to how well your home keeps heat in. I mean, I guess it, it's the it's the same. It is, it is misleading because unfortunately R value only covers heat loss or heat gain through conduction, your building can lose heat or gain heat through many different ways. And our value only covers conduction. Conduction is the transfer of heat through a material as opposed to convection, which is the transfer of heat through the air, through gas or through liquid. Yeah. So solid versus uh, gas or liquid. Right. right. But you can, your building can also lose heat in other different methods, other different ways like uh, radiation. So radiation is the transfer gain of heat through electromagnetic waves, which is how the earth receives uh, heat from the sun, for example. There's yeah. no air in outer space, but you still receive heat through electromagnetic waves. So when you have lots of windows in your house, is it fair to say that that heat that comes through the windows from the sun beaming through the windows is radiation? Yes. Is heat through radiation. Yes. So, uh, I mean, for example, we were driving in my truck yesterday and it was bright and sunny outside, but it was really cold. But inside the truck, it was actually really hot because there's so much glass and there, none of the outside air was uh, seeping in. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that is very tricky because you can say, okay, glass has an R value of I don't know, say 10 or 15, but you're ignoring the amount of heat that's going to come in through electromagnetic waves. So you have to, you have to be a little careful when you're thinking about yeah. R so, value. So in summary, it's just, R value is just a measure of conduction. Um, I know we discussed thermal mass in our we did, uh, yeah. podcast before. So that would actually be radiation then, because like a big thick block wall would prevent electromagnetic waves from coming into the into the interior of the house right but it, then it's storing that heat and then it's radiating it outside or inside, inside at night yeah. yeah when when it comes to building a home it's it's always about what's the highest r value i can get what's the highest r value i can get but uh in our opinion that's not the most important aspect it's something very important to consider because it is a large part of your electricity bill it's the largest portion of your electricity bill or your energy bill every month what is uh, the heating and cooling, heating, of, cooling your, of your house, yeah. yes. And the biggest factor in what causes that heating and cooling bill to go up and down is how well your house is insulated. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about just one specific type of insulation, and that is blanket insulation or blown-in insulation. Is that technically two different types? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still it the is. same material used. It is, yeah. But it's just how it's applied. Yeah. Which I think is a common thread in, in all this insulation. It's all mostly this, a lot of the same materials, but just different applications. Different forms. Different forms, yeah. yeah. Different chemistries. So blanket insulation can further be divided into 
bat insulation, which is, uh, and roll insulation. So bat insulation, it's kind of like Kleenex is used for tissue. It's just a common term that's used for any pink insulation you, you see. But bat insulation is actually very specific. It refers to these, uh, like uh, usually a rectangular piece of insulation that um, can be placed within your studs or like on the bottom of your flows, as opposed to a roll insulation, which is this made of the same material as bat insulation. It just comes in rolls. Yeah, I think I think that Kleenex analogy you you made. Uh, I'd like to take that a step further and let's see if this is this is accurate. So, bat is to rolled as Kleenex is to toilet paper. What? Bat is to roll. Bat is to roll as Kleenex, Kleenex is to, is toilet, to paper? toilet paper. Yes. It's made of the same material that comes in a different yes. form. Yes, it's just Kleenex is like our tissues are cut up into small pieces, whereas toilet paper is a long roll. That's true. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I like so that. So in general, bat is just a, it's just a way to simplify the process because uh, whenever you see that installation done, you, you're taking out the uh, the need to cut the material itself and you can just set it between your stud bays. Yeah, but most of the time, people are actually using roll blanket insulation, but they just call it bat insulation. I was always under the assumption that bat insulation was just that pink stuff you see, but that's actually fiberglass insulation. Bat insulation is, is merely uh, a way of turning the insulation, it, it making the insulation easier to apply by cutting it into strips. Yes, it comes in these rectangular pieces. You can buy at Home Depot or in bulk from somewhere else. Um, but it, bat insulation is really good around tight places or even in your attics where you have like defined rectangular spaces that need to be filled with insulation as opposed to a roll, which is really good in your walls because you usually have like eight feet or 10 feet that just need a single... Um, role of insulation. Does that make sense? But why wouldn't bat insulation be easy to use for those bays between your studs and your wall? Like, because lots of homes are built with eight foot walls or 10 foot walls. You, you could use it, but bat usually comes in like four foot pieces. So in say a 10 foot wall, you'd have to have two and a half pieces of these bat insulation. If you're, if you're applying it right, there's always an overlap between these um, bat insulation pieces. Mm -hmm. So there's not going to be any infiltration between them if you're applying it right. But if you don't apply it right, there could be gaps in them. So to avoid that, people just use a 10 foot or an eight foot roll that roll. provides a continuous um, fiberglass insulation in that stud bay. So these bats and rolls can come in either faced or unfaced. So face just means that it has a craft paper on one side of the insulation. Um, and sometimes this craft paper is actually black in color, which is what we have in our house. This our 60 year old house. Yes. And that black paper is it's, merely a vapor barrier. No, it's actually craft paper that's impregnated with tar. Okay, and what's the purpose of this? Yes, it acts as a vapor barrier. You're right. Okay, that's what I thought was just yeah. it's a it's a vapor barrier. It's not a super suitable vapor barrier. No, for no, your it's home. not. It's it's a like a low quality vapor barrier just for your insulation. That's on the other side of this craft right. paper to prevent moisture from any moisture that got through your vapor barrier on the exterior of your home. Yeah, it's like a tertiary last last yes. resort uh, defense. Which, I've seen is uh, very is commonly used in walls, but not so commonly used in ceilings. Yes, you're right. Yeah, and when you're installing it in walls, I read that it depends on the climate that you're in. If you're in cold climates, the vapor barrier on this insulation should be on the outside of the house, and in warm climates, it should be on the inside of the house. But I'm not sure about this because mm. half the websites say the opposite, and the other the other half say the other way around. Uh -huh. Fiberglass or mineral wool insulation, which we'll get to in a minute, is has a moisture resistance of its own to, to a small extent? It does. I mean, fiberglass is basically what the name suggests. It's glass. Mm -hmm. So it does have some moisture resistance like in, in itself, but it can still get wet mm. and compressed. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder why half would say on the outside, half would say on the inside of your wall, like which way you face it. I... 
I understand. It depends on the climate, whether you're in a warm climate or a cold climate. Right, but I, why would a warmer climate climate need it facing on the inside? I wonder. Yeah. What's the difference there? It's more humid, so I'm I'm wondering if that uh, insulation has its own form of moisture resistance, and then if it seeps through that, even then you have your uh, facing for your insulation as your last line of defense, whereas opposed to having your facing and then it getting into the uh, mineral wool or the fiberglass. Yeah. I'm not sure why. I don't know. How would it be that different? I mean, whether you're in a warm climate or a cold climate, if it rains on the outside, you need, you need, a, 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 you need a line of defense on the outside. So why is it that in warmer climates you need it on the inside? I don't know. So is faced insulation required in your walls? It's not required, no. Okay, but it's just a, I'm, I'm assuming it's a more expensive option because it's an extra, extra step you have to take in making the insulation? No, it's not an extra step you take. It's just whether you buy a faced insulation product or an unfaced product. When no, you... no, I, I'm saying like in the manufacturing process, Facing oh. the insulation is an extra step, so it's going to be more expensive. Yeah. And also it would depend on whether it's just regular craft paper, because I don't think that would be expensive at all, versus the black paper, like black okay. tarred paper. Or even uh, foil on one side. I've seen that. On on fiberglass? Uh, like foil face paper? Yeah, but that's usually on it's like a, a board insulation. We're spending so much time on this uh, fiberglass and, or, sorry, we're spending yeah, so much time yeah. on this blanket insulation. But we're not really big fans of it, yeah. to be honest. I mean, there's there's tons of different better methods, and I think the construction industry is realizing this and moving towards uh, uh, better options, which we'll discuss in later podcast. Yeah. So there's faced and there's unfaced. Yes, and ceilings usually have unfaced, which is yes. what we have in in our attic as well. And I've seen that whenever you're retrofitting a uh, an attic space, the insulation for an attic, you have your rolls already in. And if you're going to apply more rolls, then you would go perpendicular to uh, the, the, the joist where your, ro your rolls are between the joist. Your first yeah. set of rolls are between the joist. Mm -hmm. So then you would turn your second set 90 degrees so that you would cover up all those uh, thermal bridges. Yes, you're right. You would have unfaced rolls perpendicular to the joist. You're so, right. so when would you use loose or loose fill or blown in insulation? And what, it, what exactly is that? From what I've seen... It's usually as a retro in retrofits. It's usually put in ceilings over existing insulation. And it it just seems like a terrible idea to me. It it's seems so messy, messy yeah. and it takes up so much space because whenever you buy these bats or rolls, they're compressed and they have glue in them that makes them all these fibers stick together. Oh, by the way, there's some really good how it's made videos for fiberglass and mineral wool insulation. Yeah, we link them in the description. Highly recommended. Yeah. But with loose fill or blown in, it's it takes up so much room. I don't know why people even use it. My assumption is that it's slightly cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it's not it's not like bad insulation where you can just like open up the package and roll it out. You need right. a special type of machine yeah. because if you just take this insulation and spread it out, they, they claim that it's not as effective as when you use the machine to blow it. So from an anti-contractor home perspective, using a rolled in insulation to retrofit your attic would be better than doing the blown in because the blown in you have to hire a contractor or at least rent this machine. They say it has its purposes, like it's good around obstructions because it's hard to get, hard to cut bat insulation or even um, roll insulation perfectly around like cylindrical um, pipes or something in your attic. So if you have this loose fill, it can fill up all those gaps in those areas. It seems like you would need a thicker layer of the blown in. Yeah, from what I've seen, whenever you put it in your attic, you need this big like a foot or two feet barrier and you blow it in behind that. You have like two feet of this loose fill blown in insulation. Wow. That would make our attic completely yeah. inaccessible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So we have talked about the different types of insulation. Now we're going to talk about the materials that actually make up these insulation. Yes. Yeah. So there's, there's two 
different materials used for most commonly used you mean the pink stuff which is fiberglass and the gray stuff which is mineral wool yes yeah and i used to think that the gray stuff was just like old pink stuff (laughs) (laughs) fiberglass insulation was actually invented in toledo ohio remember we went there oh yeah we've been there we've been to a glass blowing uh class at that uh, we did that was cool what building was that talk about interesting use of uh Um, Using the air gap between the glass. Uh Uh-huh. That was a beautiful building. What was that? That was a SA sauna, right? So what did they do over there? They had a gap between the glass? Yes, they used an air gap to uh, act as their, not as insulation, but as... Like a buffer? A buffer, yeah. I mean, you know how air gaps are used uh, when you have a double facade or uh, even when you're using brick and you use an air gap, there's always... It's keeping that, is it conduction because the material is not touching or is it radiation or is it convection? It's Maybe it's all of them. It's the doing all gap. of the three. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, air gap would be convection, but then it could also act as a buffer for radiation too, maybe. Yeah, this building was amazingly well conditioned. It was, yeah. For having, for being all glass. Yeah. So five glass or glass wool, which is the pink insulation that you see most of the time, is actually made of 40 to 60% recycled glass. So it's pretty uh, sustainable. I don't know. Yeah, and from what pretty I've seen, it's it's glass that's been recycled a couple of times. Yes, maybe. usually on the second or the third time. That's what they use it for. Uh, so this glass, they break it up into tiny little pieces and they add sand, soda, ash, limestone and other minerals to it which is basically what makes up glass, sand, soda, ash, and limestone. Um, So all of that stuff is melted together, and then it's poured into what I think of as, um, you know, the salad spinner kind of bowls? Mm -hmm. It's a bowl with thousands of little holes in it, and it's spinning. Okay, so so it's like a a big strainer. A a big strainer. Strainer strainer for uh, melted glass. Yes. So melted glass is poured into this while it's spinning, and then it's... uh, Cool air is also applied in all directions. So it makes this cotton candy looking stuff, but it's white in color. It's not pink, it's white or greenish, which is which is what you'd expect glass to look like. Th- that's just the nature of glass. Of glass, yeah. yeah. So it's basically tiny glass fibers. That's what you make whenever you cool it while spinning. And then there's a pink adhesive that's sprayed onto these fibers. Um, and I don't know why they chose pink because of how how much it looks like cotton candy (laughs) but anyway so they decided to spray pink adhesive to these white fibers and then then they start the compression uh, sequence they compress it several times and compact it into um, these bats or rolls whatever you eventually use so why is there always this perception and how accurate is this statement if you touch that stuff? You don't touch fiberglass insulation because it'll make you itch. Yes. And it could completely make sense because it's tiny shards of glass. So whenever you touch it, it's getting Im- embedded into your skin. That's why you don't want to touch it. It doesn't dissolve. So even when you inhale it, you're inhaling glass. And that's going to get stuck to your windpipe and your lungs. Which makes blown-in insulation seem... I mean... Uh, loose fill blown in insulation seem like an even worse idea. Yeah, I know. It, yeah, you know what it, what's coming to my mind right now? Hmm. That scene in one of the Avengers movies when they're in outer space and there's this guy, uh, the Spider-Man was there and Doctor Strange and Iron Man and um, there's this guy shooting like glass daggers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was like going to pierce, um, was it Iron Man? I don't know who he was going to pierce. He was going Doctor to pierce Strange. Some, Doctor Strange. He was going to pierce Doctor Strange with those glass daggers. That's what fiberglass insulation is remi- reminding me of. Oh, <laughs> that's so. That's what happens when you touch fiberglass insulation. You're basically being shot daggers of microscopic forms glass, of that. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you don't have Doctor Strange's powers to prevent that. Yeah. The main reason why this works, like you think, okay, glass is a solid. How can that work as an insulator it's not the glass itself 
that's working as an insulator. It's the tiny air pockets that's in between all these glass fibers and glass shards that traps air and prevents it from going from one side of your wall to another, to the other. So similar to the sauna glass pavilion that we just discussed, that air gap is trapping the air and you're right. keeping yeah, the you're right. heat from transferring. And that's because gas, like air, is a better insulator than liquids or solids. So in theory, the best insulator would just be have a huge buffer between your exterior wall and your <laughs> interior wall? I guess so. So you're saying like have one solid wall, an air gap, and then another solid wall on the yeah. other side? <laughs> yeah. And just forget using... Talk about low maintenance. Bat, bat insulation Anti-contractor home friendly. We found the answer. <laughs> air, that's the answer. Okay, so why is fiberglass or the pink stuff used everywhere or the most of the places that we've seen yeah in in most homes well newer homes are starting to use it less and less but yeah it is the cheapest option and it's the most diy friendly it is use. Yeah. you can it's run readily available at uh, your big box stores and you can just buy it as long as you're wearing gloves and long sleeves you don't want to get face it all masks yeah eye, eye protection yeah <laughs> you can go you can open up your walls and place it in or a new construction you can put it in yourself so all you do is you set the roll in, in the stud bay and you staple it in. The disadvantages of fiberglass insulation include low R value. It's the lowest R value of the different types of insulation we're going to discuss. For, for the thickness, you mean? Because, I mean, you can get an R30. That's pretty good. Yes, but, but it's for, for the, the thickness. thickness. Yeah. yeah. So the, the installation is one of the main disadvantages if... The installation is not done correctly. For example, if you're cutting out an area for an outlet box or for plumbing, uh, you are, and you're not properly insulating behind that, you're not getting the full R value. Yes, you're right. which is is the same for all different types of insulation. If it's not installed, installed properly, properly. Yeah. you're not going to get the full R value. Yeah, and I also read that like with fiberglass insulation, because it has all these air pockets, it compresses over time. And even if there's water, there's any sort of water hitting this, again, it compresses, it loses its R value. It doesn't have the same lifespan that other forms of insulation do have that we're going to talk about next. Yes. And so, and also this, as we've discussed earlier, this insulation is, can be itchy or cause rashes if, if handled uh, with bare skin. Yeah. Which is not the same for the other types of insulation we're going to discuss. Even though it could still be hazardous to you in other ways. Okay, the next form of insulation is the gray stuff. The mineral wool, which is made of rock and slag. So the, the main premise of mineral wool is very similar to fiberglass. It's just that the materials that it's made of is different. So mineral wool is made of basalt rock, which is basically solidified lava. And it's made of slag, which is the remains from iron ore extraction or iron extraction from iron ore. Yeah. So again, we're using uh, waste material, something that's not going to be used for any other purposes, which is a good thing. Yeah. And so heated up. And again, it's heated up to like 1,500 degrees Celsius to produce lava. Yeah. So basically, they're just simulating a volcano. Yes. Mm hmm. But so this molten lava is cooled down by whipping it in the air. Same, the same thing as fiberglass insulation. And cotton candy. And cotton candy. And you make these thin strands, thin gray strands, um, which again, binding solution is applied to it, which is like, which is a sticky solution. And it makes all these strands of rock and slag stick together. And this time the binding solution is not a pink adhesive, right? Yes, you're right. So all these fibers are stuck together and then it's rolled into, uh, oh, it's actually, it's, there's a pendulum, right? That swings back and forth. That's what the How It's Made yes. video yeah. uh, says. Uh, so there's a pendulum that swings these, swings layers of these uh, mineral wool fibers back and forth. And it forms these bats or rolls, which are then heated up. So the binding agent is activated and it makes these solid forms that are much more 
structurally sound than bat insulation. They're more rigid than bat insulation? They're more than, rigid, Than yeah. fiberglass insulation? They're more rigid than fiberglass insulation. Okay. Yes. So whenever you put them in your walls, they're more... You don't have to staple them. You don't have to worry about it falling out. When you put it in there, it stays in there. It just sort of holds into place. Yes. So it's actually much better for your ceilings because you don't need to put any sort of like extra sheathing to make it stay up there. Uh, mineral wool insulation is very similar. The, the manufacturing process is very similar to fiberglass. It's just a matter of it's glass glass fibers or rock, rock, rock and fiber. slag. Yeah. 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 And what other fibers could you use, I wonder, to make yeah. insulation? Heat anything up, right? And then right. Just yeah, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Metal let's fibers. Heat this cup up and see what happens. <laughs> Porcelain fiber. Uh, so the R value for mineral wool insulation is higher than it is for fiberglass for the same thickness of material. It has a better resistance to fire. Is that because it takes a higher temperature to heat up rock and slag than it does glass oh i guess so because that how it's made video that we watched it showed that even if you heat up one side of it the other side of this mineral wool insulation is cool to touch which is crazy but wow. i guess that's because of the the melting point of rock and slag yeah, yeah. and it doesn't absorb water like uh, fiberglass would. Yeah, and that's because in the manufacture process, they add a sp they spray oil on these fibers before they compress it. Why do they do like that? Like a water repellent oil. Okay. That gives it the water repellent properties. Is this the one they they cut with the the, the water, water jets? jets? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. They don't do that for fiberglass. They don't do that for fiberglass. No, they use a oh, they metal just use blade. a big circular saw. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, and it also, because it's so firm, it's easier to cut it too. You right. know, I read that you you should cut these with a, a knife, like a kitchen knife. Oh, like a butter knife as opposed to... Not a butter knife, a kitchen knife. Like, like a steak knife? Not, not a steak knife. The stuff that we use to cut vegetables. You use that to cut insulation. As opposed to... A blade or... Like a power tool? Like a saw blade? As opposed to any of those, yeah. Okay, because you don't need anything more than that yeah and so one of the uh, other advantages is that it is a better soundproofing than fiberglass insulation has uh, so it's often used to install between floors to uh, prevent the sound transfer from, from one floor to another yeah. yeah but there are some disadvantages uh, it's more expensive than fiberglass insulation uh, about 80 cents per square feet versus 60 cents per square feet uh, so it's still it's still relatively cheap, but it's more expensive. So, but you are getting a higher grade of insulation, it seems. The other disadvantage is that if you want it in bulk or you want a particular size, you're probably going to have to custom order these. It's not as easy available at like your big box stores like Home Depot and Lowe's as fiberglass insulation. And similar to fiberglass insulation, it causes itching and rashes because it's tiny fibers of rock that pierce your skin so would that be true with any uh any of this fibrous any material, material? yeah that's fibrous it, it would because it's tiny well not it's, if it's natural materials like n wool or cotton or they also use recycled genes i wouldn't think that would cause like respiratory issues or skin and ra skin even issues if or it's rashes. small fibers and it's also not as good as other forms of insulation, which we'll discuss in future podcasts. Yes. Yeah. So another form, if you don't want to use um, fiberglass insulation or mineral wool insulation, you could use natural insulation. But whenever I tried to do some sort of research on this natural fiber insulation, it yielded very few results. It's not as widely used and it's difficult to find find it in big quantities or find a high R value of it. Like you can find R15 or R13, but you can't find like an R30 or R45 natural fiber insulation. So uh, would a natural fiber insulation be something like straw bale insulation? Yeah. Which, Which we saw in those... Uh, yeah, we've seen used a couple of times. And the issue with yeah. that is that it has to be really thick to accomplish the same 
our value yeah as something it's like basically mineral big wool. straw bales that are two feet or something that's just and tied together pests and rodents like to uh, burrow into that and yeah hang out mm-hmm. but the advantages of using something like that is that there no v- there's no vocs no volatile organic compounds it's not toxic let's say if you lived on a farm or something it may be easily the available easiest and yeah. cheapest form of insulation you could find so all these things that we talked about this fiberglass and the mineral wool they can be used for both blanket insulation and they can be used for loose fill insulation yes but another available form for loose fill insulation is cellulose loose fill which is basically newspaper oh it's newspaper mush okay which we definitely need to do something with all those newspapers that nobody <laughs> reads <laughs> So it's made of 75 to 80% recycled newspaper and you think that's food for animals but they mix it with borates and, uh, and ammonium sulfates um so that it's not it's a it's almost like a pest deterrent Okay it seems like paper would be uh an issue for uh fireproofing But they say that these borates and ammonium sulfates in addition to being pest deterrents they also fire retardants Okay that so that's how they get yeah. away with it but you're spraying something natural with chemicals so when so you is that really good yeah. for so you so when you do a cellulose or sorry when you do a loose fill the most common is to use fiberglass or mineral wool correct yes cellulose mm-hmm. would be a, a tertiary option yeah they claim that it has an, a higher r value than fiberglass but it's again not as commonly used the disadvantage with loose fill insulation versus blanket insulation Whenever you want to change out the insulation in your home, you have to get a special machine that sucks up all these loose fibers as opposed to a blanket insulation where you can just roll all this stuff up and then throw it away. Yeah, or place it in a trash bag close to you because for example, attic access may be at the far ends of your house where there's not a, a door, an exterior door close by, so you with this rolled in insulation you could roll it up put it in a trash bag carry it outside yeah with the spray or sorry with the loose fill insulation you would have to run a hose from your attic all the way out to your exterior door to blow it or to To suck suck it it into yeah uh, your container or whatever your yeah your big truck seems like a bad idea yeah so what do we think about uh blanket and loose fill overall seems like we're not too keen on it i mean that's just because of our knowledge of other forms of insulation, especially more popular kinds that are uh, popping up today. Like spray foam. Spray foam or That's ICF. That's all the rage stuff right like now. That. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I definitely am more keen on using a rolled or a bat as opposed to a loose fill. And mineral wool seems like it would be, you're not uh, sacrificing too much as far as cost, but you're getting a better performance. Yeah. yeah. And I think in our, our next podcast, we'll discuss... Uh, more rigid forms of insulation, uh, including things like insulated concrete forms. Which we discussed before, yeah. But we'll talk about it in terms of the insulating aspect of it. Yes, and everybody's favorite term, R-value. Yes. As well as the rigid boards. You see the pink and blue boards that you use in architecture school all the time to make your models. Yeah. That's actually an insulator. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching our Anti-Contractor Home podcast. See you next week. Bye.